Imagine waiting 10 years to move into your dream home, day by day watching it slowly being built from a distance saying to yourself that one day you will be calling this beautiful mansion your home but only to move in and die three years later. Before we get started, if you're a fan of the abandoned, historical, and strange locations and events, then you are in the right place. Hit that thumbs up and let's dive right into today's location. After waiting 10 years for their home to be built, Eliza Putnam, the second wife to Douglas Putnam, passed away in 1862 from a heart disease in the very home that her husband built for her. The funeral was even held at the mansion in the formal room. Douglas Putnam was a successful investor and entrepreneur in the years prior to the Civil War. Douglas became known as a real estate banking and railroad man of power after making some very smart investment moves that put him at the top of his business class. Douglas was the great grandson of General Israel Putnam. Douglas's brother David Putman Jr. was the leading abolitionist in Marietta, Ohio. Abolitionist was a movement that sought to end immediate slavery in the United States. David was said to visit the home quite often, which led to the belief that the home was used as a part of an underground railroad system but there was not enough evidence to prove this case. The Underground Railroad, if you didn't know, was a network of secret routes and safe houses established in the United States during the early to mid 19th century. It was used by enslaved African Americans primarily to escape into free states and Canada. In 1849, the Putmans began the construction of their home on Putman Avenue. It was to be called the Putman's Palace, and it was modeled after Eliza's dream home, based on a Tuscan villa style that mainly appeared in the New England region. The mansion was to be built at a cost of $65,000, which in today's dollars is equivalent to $1.7 million. This beautiful mansion is built with 22 rooms along with a grand tower. The massive walls were made from 24 inch thick sandstone that was taken from around the area. The rooms had an elaborate 12 foot ceiling with beautiful handcrafted wooden moldings and a marble fireplace that would show off the luxurious life that the Putmans were so lucky enough to live. The tall windows would allow natural light to shine through showing off the Victorian era furniture that they had along with very expensive oriental rugs. The Putman's dream home was only supposed to take five years to complete, but the construction was prolonged with the complications that would be caused by the Civil War. As this happened, Eliza went into a depressive state while her future home was delayed. Then in 1859, after 10 long years of waiting, the Putman's dream home was finally completed. After three years of living in their home, Eliza became very ill and died abruptly with a case of acute heart disease. After the death of his wife, Douglas could not stand living in the mansion alone, as this was Eliza's dream home, and being in the home was just too much to bear. So Douglas moved out, and in 1894, he sold the home to the highest bidder for $12,000. The highest bidder came to be known as Harry Knox. As soon as the home was bought, the Knox family had redesigned the original driveway to appear as an anchor. The Knox family were heavily involved in boat building, and they wanted this massive property to reflect their lives. Also, the home sitting up on a hill overlooked the city of Marietta. This is where they could see their boat business down below. At this point, they renamed their home the Anchorage Mansion. Through the years, many people had taken residency at this mansion. Then, in 1960, a nursing home was established in the home and it utilized the mansion itself to house patients. At that time, they altered the name and called it the Christian Anchorage. The nursing home renovated the mansion to fit their needs and care of their patients, along with modifying the grand staircase, which they incorporated rubber tile steps to decrease the threats of patients slipping and falling down the stairs. They also installed an elevator which today is closed and blocked off. The transition of the third floor still remains a mystery to this day. There are large rooms with lower ceilings barely tall enough to stand and even crouch under. Today this part of the home is blocked off and it's still unknown what the purpose of this area was used for. Storage or maybe an area for children? Let me know what you think below. By 1986, the nursing home fell into disrepair without appropriate funding. The mansion set abandoned for a while and then they donated it for a dollar to the Washington County Historical Society in 1996. 
Then, later on, the historical society turned over ownership to the Hidden Marietta, where the nonprofit organization has made much progress in restoring the home room by room back to its original self. The nonprofit organizations are taking donations and are looking for good contractors to help volunteer to get this place back to its original look. Walking around and exploring this four-story mansion really takes you back to the 1800s. Just only being able to explore two floors at the time, you could just look at the craftsmanship in this home and admire the work that was done by hand. It makes you realize that the homes today are just not built with this type of passion. From the custom plaster crown molding, the hand-drawn plaster designs on the ceilings, to the handcrafted wood floors and trim throughout the house. It really makes you appreciate the time and effort that was spent in making homes like this. As you explore this mansion, you can see where the servant's corridors were and the butler staircase that would make its way back and forth to the kitchen. And This is so that the house servants would be able to stay out of sight from the guests that the previous owners would have over. Unfortunately, the kitchen could not be filmed at this time as it was undergoing construction. But what I can say is that there was only really plywood flooring and bare walls at the time. All right, that does it for today. Hit that thumbs up. Peace, I love you, and as always, God bless.